At this point, we're going to delve into some mechanics here uh, to introduce Hooke's law, and you'll you'll see why in a moment. Okay, because what we've really been considering with differential equations is considering uh, situations like pendulums um, or a spring, um, and that kind of brings in the idea of in mechanics. We've been dealing with situations where uh, a string has been inextensible, okay, so it's not been stretchy. But if you then push away that problem um, and kind of go, okay, well, let's go into more realistic scenarios because not all strings are going to be inextensible, there's going to be some elasticity to them. Um, and that brings in Hooke's law. Okay, so the idea is that this could be um, an elasticated string or it could be a spring um, where you've got, let's say it's attached to a weight, okay, for example. So this string is attached to a weight at the end. Let's just put that on there. Okay, now if you've let that hang, then the string itself will have a natural length, as it's referred to, okay, so this will be its natural length. Um, which we can write as L, its natural length. And then we've got this extra bit that it's been stretched to, uh, which we refer to as the extension which we will call x. Now, you could also have this, if it's a spring, as compression as well, rather than extension. And Hooke's law, what it says is that the tension in your string, or your spring, is proportional to the extension x. So is equal to k times x. Now, k here is referred to as the stiffness. So it depends on, obviously, the material that you're using here. Now, some problems will also go into uh, taking this a little bit further, where k can be written as lambda over L, and there's your x. Okay? So L, of course, as I said, is the natural length. Lambda is what's referred to as the modulus of elasticity. And it's measured in newtons. And so because you've got that length there, L, you've got this length here, x. OK, so dimensionally that they knock each other out. They're not going to cancel one another out, but dimensionally they do, leaving you with newtons, which is what you want your tension to be in anyway. OK, so this is what Hooke's Law is about. Now, where is this really coming in to where we've been dealing with differential equations? Well, we've been looking at springs, and we can model how the spring oscillates um, using differential equations. And so that's where we're going to be bringing this in, because we've been working with x. Then we've got the dx by dt, or x dot. And then we've got d2x by dt squared, which is your x double dot, OK? Where if that is your displacement, then this is your velocity, and this is your acceleration. And the moment that we're going into acceleration here, you can start to see, well, f equals ma. So using Newton's second law, and we can look at the tension in the string or the spring, which we can then say, well, we can have a net force using the tension here, and that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration, d2x by dt squared, and that then builds in your differential equation. Okay, So we're going to see an example of this in the next video.